En los carros es donde esto va a sonar Los bajos a reventar y en la disco prendo sin pena Este es el himno pa' la calle, pa' los gans y pa' la nena Y de modo fue que siendo ropa boutique Con un flow en éxtasis, baby, you know how it is Todas luces de gris, las botellas Genesis Julio H le sube al beat, haciendo buena music No, no, no busco dinero, siempre andado con él Hago música porque me gusta What's going on, Bully World? I'm your host, Zeb, and you tune in to another episode of Bully Talk with Zeb Pitts. And tonight, my special guest is Marco Suarez. Marco is the founder of Suarez Bulls Kennels. He's also the owner of one of the most legendary dogs in the bully game, uh, R.I.P. Paco. He is also an ABKC judge. I want to thank Marco for coming on tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Zeb. Thank you very much for having me tonight. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. And uh, I'm here, brother. I'm all yours. Man, I'm, I'm I'm so glad to have you on tonight, man. Before we really get into the dogs, man, I really want people to to, to know about you and your background. Um, where where are you originally from? I'm I'm Peruvian by birth, but I've been living uh, in America since I was 17 years old. <coughs> since 17. Since I was 17. Can you talk years about? Old. Can you can you talk about uh, life living in Peru as a youngster? Oh, brother, it was beautiful. You know, uh, I have a wonderful childhood. Um, you know, we, my parents had a ranch in the rainforest, so I grew up with, uh, with parrots, with uh, monkeys, with, uh, I mean, you name it, I had it. So I always had that, you know, this, this love for the, for the animals. You know, um, when I was uh, 17, I, I, they, they sent me, you know, to America to, to go to college. So, you know, then uh, I never went back. You know, I fell in love with the country, and I stay here. Well, when did you go to, uh, to college? Oh, when UCLA. First Santa Monica College and then UCLA. Really? What was your major? Business administration. 
So how was that transition leaving Peru, coming to the United States and living in, in Southern California during that time? Ah, oh, brother, I don't know. I, I, to me, I, I never, how can I say, I never felt the the um, the change, you know, of uh, countries or or atmosphere at all. You know, I adapt really quick, you know, um, yeah, and the system. I love it here. You know, I love it from from the first day. So, you know, I never I never felt the need to go back. Um, I made very good friends here. I had family here also. And uh, I don't know, college kept me busy. So, you know, I, I didn't have really much time to, you know, to look back. And I fell in love with the country, brother. And here, here I am. Let me ask you, how often do you get a chance to, to go back and visit? I go at least once a year. I have a ranch also. You know, uh, I have a few dogs in Peru. Um, so I, I go at least once, sometimes twice, sometimes three times a year. You know, it depends on you know, it depends on my time and 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 you know, um, it's just timing. But I I, I I try to go as often as I can. Let me ask you: um, since you left at the age of seventeen, and, and since you say you go back at least once a year, how has the country changed in your in your eyes? Big time, my brother. Big time. It's a much, much more modern country. Um, it, uh, you have everything. You know, when I left, uh, uh, it, it wasn't. It, it was not the same like today. Today, you got the most uh, um, modern gas stations, uh, movie theaters. Uh, you name it, we have it. You know, it, it's just that I cannot adjust no more to Peru. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's you know, it, it's uh, all my manhood. You know, I spend it over here, and I have a wonderful family. Uh, you know, I got married, and you know, this is my country, brother. You know, uh, um, I I love Peru, but I I don't think I can adjust no more to the system. Okay. Now, once you once you transferred over to UCLA and finished school, what what did you do with your degree at that point? To be honest with you, um, I started to work for a fam- my my family had a business, and uh, I started to work for them. You know, they had a valet parking company. While I was going to college, I was working for them part time, and at the age of three. I became honors um, owner with my brother, with my older brother, and um, that's what we did. You know, um, well, we, I'm still involved with it, not as, as deep as before, you know. But that's that's where I where I end up. You know, I end up working uh, first for my family and then for myself. And and 11 years ago, I got totally hooked with the bullies and. Um, you know, most of my time today is with the dogs. I spend it with the dogs. Speaking speaking on that, how did you get involved um, to get your first bully? And what, what 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 made you actually love that breed and and to actually want to get a dog like that? Okay, I tell you, uh, um, I hunt. Uh, I hunt boar. Uh, I like you know those kind of sports and. I had, you know, few pit bulls in Peru, in my ranch, and there was this one super smart, gorgeous um, female that I had pit bull. She was uh, a, a very, very smart girl, and I wanted to bring it over. You know, uh, um, I had it there; it was a present. So, I, at one point, I wanted to bring it over, but because. Um, you know, many r- rules and regulations and, and, and um, what can I say? Um, I just couldn't bring it over, you know. Uh, probably a lot of restrictions to, to bring them over. Yeah, yes, yeah. you know, uh, they give me a lot, I mean, big time, hard time. They give me a hard time, so I end up just, you know, uh, I, I, I left her there with my family. You know, she's, she's, she's still in my ranch. But, um... And then when I came back to America, I was 
you know, I, I, I was thinking I, I need to have one of, you know, uh, one of my dogs here. I need to have a pit bull. Um, so I started to research, 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 and I found, uh, I found the bullies. All of a sudden, I found these, like, much thicker. Uh, this pit bull, it looks like a bodybuilder. And I, I, I immediately fell in love with it. You know, I fell in love with it, and that was my next thing. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a bully, and I'm going to get it over here. I don't, I don't have to go through the hassle of, of uh, bringing a dog from a different country. So that's how I end up, you know, how I end up liking, liking these dogs. Well, let me ask you this, Marco, because you said you, you like this, the sport of, of, of hunting boar, correct? Yes. Sir. How was it? To, how was it to, to find out? Did did were bullies during that time have any type of gameness for the hunting, or that was just something you just decided to get out of and just wanted to try something different? No, um, no. Uh, I, I still hunt. You know, when I go back to Peru, uh, if I have the time, I go hunting. It, it's a it's a it's a passion that I have. That I you know I. I here, when I'm here, I work a lot, so I don't have much time, you know. Um, but when I go to Peru, when it's vacation time, I always look for at least a few days that I can go to, to the rainforest and, and, you know, go hunting. Um, but nowadays, I do use my bullies, you know, for hunting. Um, really? Before, yes, sir. Before, it used to be only my pinfall. Um, and, but no, now, you know, now I, I have quite a few bullies there and they're awesome. They're awesome. They have, you know, my dogs, they, they have, how can I say, they're athletes, you know, um, that's what I like. I like my dogs to be a do it all type of dog. Um, a dog that can, you know, it can handle swimming, running, uh, anything. You know, uh, so the dogs that I have right now in Peru, brother, they perform like any other hunting dog. That's interesting because um, so when when you were putting together, I guess during that time, once you got started establishing your line, those were some of the traits you wanted to keep in your dogs. The ability Absolutely. to. To, to still be athletic, to, the ability to still go out and do things that a uh, that a pit can do. Oh, absolutely! You know, I mean, to me, a bully has to be a do-it-all type of dog. You know, an athlete that can handle anything really, and be smart and be able to um, recognize situations. Uh, you know, a, a smart dog, and that's what we have. You know. Um, and that's what I've been, you know, uh, reading for. You know, my program, you know, they have to be dogs and they're friendly, you know, with that super nice demeanor, you know, friendliness, but also a dog that wants to work. You know, a dog that is, that is, is willing to please you, wants to please you. So I never went away from that, you know. That's, uh, I think that's a very important part of these dogs. Where where did you see your first bully? Um, my first bully, I, I I saw it when I was researching for kennel, you know, pit bull uh, kennel. Somehow I found the picture of uh, this little Rosan, what's his name? Um, from Mike from Devil's Den. Um, Springle, gorgeous dog. Uh, I had it in my, I had it in my mind a few seconds ago. Um, golly, I'll tell you in a minute. But you know, um, it was a it was a little Rosan that um, Mike from Devil's Den had, and then I start to research and I end up uh, finding Devil's Den channel, and and then you know from then I start to link to all the um, happening channels at that time. And uh, I came to the conclusion after many, many months of researching that what I wanted was a, a little Rosan, you know, because at that time he was still very young. Um, 
he had only like four liters. Yeah, four liters. I think my 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 faculty came from the fifth reading, I think, because I, I called a few times, and every time I will call, everything was sold, nothing was available. Um, so I, I didn't know if it was just something that you know uh, these um, these people were breeding only for you know their friends, only for their group. I, I you know I was thinking a million a million things, but I was like, hopefully one day I'm gonna get a, a little raw son. So that one day came, and um, I I end up getting the last stick of the litter. I didn't care. I was I was in love with little raw. And all I wanted to have is something I don't have. Uh, I, back then, I, I also, I, um, how can I say this? Back then, it was basically I wanted to have, like, the smallest in the litter. And when I called, this guy told me, uh, well, listen, you know, it's the last week, and uh, uh, I, I tell you right now that it's a small, it's, not the same like the brothers or sisters. It's always in the litter. Basically, he was describing the runt. And a little he knew that he was just giving me exactly what I was looking for, you know? Why during that time did, that you were looking for a small dog? Um, at was that there time, a particular at, reason? Um, at, at that time, well, first, the pit that I had, in Peru, they were little. They were little. They were 35 pounders uh, to 45 pounders. You know, hunting okay, dogs, okay. Extre- yeah, extremely agile, extremely fast. Especially for what I was, you know, what I was using them for. Um, and uh, so, I wanted to have something small, and uh, everything at that time was big. You know, with bullies, bullies were, you know. 80 pounders, 90 pounders, 100 pounders, you know, they were big, big dogs. And um, I was living at that time in a condominium. So I didn't want to have a big dog, you know. I wanted to have a small dog that that is not going to be an inconvenient, you know. It's not going to be, you know. I just didn't want to have a big dog. So Little Roll was described to me as, as a compact dog for his time, you know. And... And the look, it was insane. To me, he, he was just one of the most gorgeous dogs i ever seen. And so I just wanted to have something small. When I call, when I call and they describe basically that they were like, don't complain if you, you know, <laughs> when you, you know, type of thing. Like, like when you open the crate, this is what you're going to get. This is what you're going to see. And brother, he was. He was telling me a beautiful poetry, you know, and I was listening to it, and I was like, oh, this is what I want, you know? So that's how I got Paco. He was the, he was the, the ranch. He was the last pick, you know. Um, he, wow. had a, he had a, Yeah, he had an owner, but whoever was there before me couldn't pay, and, and that's how, how, you know, so in that way. Let me ask you, Marco. Did you know once 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 you got Paco in your possession, did you know in the beginning that he was going to be a special dog, and and did you have any idea that he would leave his mark on the bully world for years to come? No, not even for a second, my brother. Not even for a second. Um, he was a pet. He was purchased to be a pet. I didn't know anything about the bully world. I didn't know anything about breeding breeders or anything, you know, related to, to the bully world, you know, or the dog world in general. You know, I just wanted to have a, a beautiful dog. I wanted to have a dog that can go around with me, that can go, you know, places with me, to the beach, you know, and, and a beautiful animal. So I wanted to have basically a, a crystal, you know, in my house, a, a beautiful animal, and that's it. I never... I never imagined, not even for a second, that I was going to be competing with him and doing nothing, none that, you know, we end up doing it later. Nothing. So not even for a second. To answer your your question now, not even for a second. (laughs) Where where did the name Paco come from? You know, I I always loved martial arts. Uh, I've been in the sport in and out through my life, and 
and I was, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, of, um, what's the word, um, holy moly, hold on, hold on, I'm a big fan of, of, um, names, you know, karate, I mean, masters of karate, samurais, and, and, you know, all those names, you know, some Chinese also, you know, masters. Um, so when I had my dog, I was like, you know what, I'm going to put a name that, that everybody's going to be able to remember, you know, he's going to, it's going to, and I thought about Paco, there was a, a master before, a Japanese uh, samurai, his name was Paco. Of course, we related Paco to, to Spanish names, you know, to Francisco or something like that. But no, there, <laughs> there is. Hello? Hello, Marco? Hello, Marco? Hello, Marco. Can you hear me, Marco? Hello, Marco.
Hello, Marco. Hello, Marco. Do I have you reconnected, Marco? Hello. Hello, Marco. Yes, brother. Marco? Yes. I completely brother. apologize for the boys crashing tonight, man. I, I, I'm completely <laughs> embarrassed about the situation, man. I, I'm Don't sorry worry. about that. Don't worry, brother. Don't worry. Don't worry. That has never happened, man. Uh, but let's, let's jump right back into it, man. I, I, I'm out of sync, but let's get back into it, man. Let's talk about the first time you show Paco in the ring. Yes. Uh, that that was in uh, Virginia. No, that was, I mean, official, official show. That was in Virginia, back to the Bullies. But before that, oh, there were, that... yeah, official, official, that was, you know, ABKC, like like when ABKC just started, you know, that was the first the first uh, ABKC where points were, you know, valid, you know. But before that, how, how before, was that show in Virginia? It was gigantic, brother. One of the nicest ever. Gigantic, and every single every single kennel was there. I mean, every single big name was there, you know. Uh, it, it was one of the nicest, nicest shows I, I ever went to till today. Was that the, was you that, the, that, at that, I was at that show. That show you brought out the mask and the, and the samurai sword. What made you do that? Um, you know, I mean, it was, um, What's the word? It was to me. It's I don't know. There, there was a lot of talking, a lot of um, uh, people saying this, people saying that, people saying that. Um, you know, everybody claimed at that time today too, of course. But everybody was claiming that they had the best dog in the country. And it was a very friendly competition. It, you know, it was a nice, nice, nice competition back in the days. And uh, I, I was sure, brother. I was so sure that I was going to take it. I mean, my dog, um, he was so well put together and so well behaved that it was going to be very difficult for another dog to take it. And and through, I mean, before that show, I already. I was traveling the country. I was driving up and down to all those barbecues. You know, remember, back then there were barbecues. So, and at that time I already went to quite a few barbecues, quite a few, uh, um, you know, competitions where they were not sanctioned, you know, by official judges. And, and he already, you know, was winning and winning and winning. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna dress up my dog. If I take it, I'm gonna I'm gonna put his I'm gonna put his armor. I'm gonna put his his uh, his samurai sword, and I'm gonna walk around the you know around the uh, around the ring, showing him you know with his uh, just to represent what he was, you know, uh, it, it's samurai Paco. So uh, with my wife, my wife did you know uh, she she helped me to uh, fabricate this mask. You know, we, 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 we fixed them and then uh, also to fabricate the little uh, armor. And uh, we had a, a small, uh, a, a small uh, sword that it was perfect for him, you know. And uh, we, we tried at home and, and he wasn't bothered at all to be wearing the armor or to be wearing the mask or anything. He wasn't bothered at all. So we took it, you know, and it's like, hey, you know, if we win, He's gonna he's gonna be, you know, going around the ring with, with his whole, you know, outfit. But um, the costume. But it, it was brother. It was one of the biggest moments that I that I you know one of the uh, happiest 
moments that I had, you know, with my dog. When it comes to the ring, how did the big, you know? How, how did the big names in the bully community feel about Paco during that time? Uh, you know, back then he was kind of like a revelation, you know, because he, he, he was, you know, he was compact. Um, he was a very short dog, um, very correct. And once again, let me repeat this, very well behaved. So, um, people liked him very much. You know, people liked him very, very much. Um, before, let's see, before Back to the Bully show in Virginia, I went maybe a, a month before, I went to New Orleans. Um, you know, they had, a, they had a big show there, and uh, True Tank was throwing it. And... Also, you know, they were talking about, you know, all these dogs showing up and, you know, all this uh, over about, you know, who was the best dog and this and that. So I decided, you know, so we decided to drive. We put back in the car and we drove uh, two days <laughs> to get there and uh, and we took it, brother. That was another, also another super nice time. But, you know, that was right before Back to the Bullies. And then Back to the Bullies... Uh, it was official, so people from New York, Jersey, um, Connecticut, um, well, California, everybody was there. All the big names back in the day, everybody was there. Everybody. It was a very beautiful atmosphere, you know, back then. It was a very, very nice atmosphere. Of course, there was competition, of course. But um, it was a very friendly competition, you know. Uh, let me ask you, Marco, back, back then, do you think the competition was tougher in the show ring because there wasn't as many shows and you had so many dogs, top, top dogs competing all at one time because there wasn't as many shows as you see today, maybe with the triple and five, sometimes five shows in one weekend? Well, you know, because there were not that many shows uh, back then, nobody would miss them. <laughs> Everybody will do the, the impossible to go to the shows. So, yes, you will go to a show, uh, I don't know, um, Virginia, and, and everybody will be there. You know, California, and people from back east will be here. You know, uh, Texas, and, and everybody, you know, people from New York, Jersey, people from California, people from Oregon will be in Texas, you know, um, um, because of the same reason. There, there were not that many shows and and everybody wanted to everybody wanted to claim it. Everyone, you know, they were beautiful dogs and not not too many shows. So everybody will just to the shows, go to the shows. Today, um, it's wonderful. It's beautiful that we have uh, shows more often. Uh, it, it's, it's very very nice. It's very good. But um, different times, you know. Uh, um, these are totally different times. Um, still, there's competition, of course, you know. Um, but before, yeah, it, it, the shows were huge, huge, because there were not that many. You know, now it's very often, which is good for the dogs, which is good for the people who, who, who you know, want to show their dogs, practice, whatever, you know, is good. Um, but the shows, but you know, back then, brother, just a simple barbecue would put together, you know, three hundred people. Just a simple barbecue, because there were not that many events. How would you describe the legacy of Paco and the show ring? Well, I think we've been very lucky. Uh, we've been very, very lucky, very successful when it comes to the ring. Uh, we have what a few champions um, produce many champions and his offspring you know keeps producing champions and great grandkids champions and great 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 grandkids you know kids champions and grand champions so um, when it comes to that I, I never went away from structure you know with Paco we bred 
only, only for structure. The whole idea was the ring, you know, keep winning. The whole idea was to have the, the you know, the next, you know, the next generation better than the one we have, you know, in our hands. And, you know, always with that idea of competing, you know, always. Never look into the next kennel, what they're doing, you know, if there's a, you know, new kid on the block or, you know, what's the new, you know, there's a new star here or there or in that state, there's a new guy. No, we never care about that. We, we always bred only intention and only intention to compete and to make a better dog than yesterday, you know. So we, we never really, like, when someone... You know how it is. You know, people will come and say, hey, Marco, I hear that this dog is insane, man. What, you know, or then, you know, these guys putting together this and that. And we'll be, you know, God bless them, you know. That's awesome. If they have, uh, if they have produced a beautiful dog, or if they have purchased a beautiful dog, good for them. That is beautiful. You know, I never let none of this stuff, nothing, none of these things to distract me, you know, for nothing. Not for a second, brother, you know. Uh, it was tough enough just to try to make a better dog than the last, you know, the last one we had. <laughs> Imagine just, you know, trying to keep up with whoever is doing whatever, you know. Uh, um, that madness, no. I'm going to ask you the question that I asked Fabian, because I asked uh, Fabian the question when it came to Remy. Because I, I can imagine he got a lot of a lot of offers for Paco. What, what, what was the highest offer you got for Paco, and why not sell him? Come again with the question. Come again. What is the what? Uh, uh, I'm asking the same question I asked Fabe when it came to to Remy. Um, I can yes. imagine you got offered a lot of money uh, from people to buy Paco off of you. What what was the highest offer you ever got for Paco, and why not sell him and keep him in your and and keep him with you? Okay. Uh, in uh, 2000 and yeah, in 2006, December 2006, uh, this doctor from the Philippines offered me $180,000 for Paco. And uh, for a poor man like myself, it was a giant amount of money, you know? I mean, uh, it was giant. And this guy was serious, serious in the beginning. I thought that, you know, it was kind of like a joke. But, no, it didn't sound like a joke, but, I, you know, could have been, you know. And uh, I told him, you, you know, if he's serious, I'm going to give you my lawyer's uh, number and uh, make your lawyer call my lawyer and they can talk. You know what? A couple hours later, my lawyer called me. <laughs> These people from the, Philipp from the Philippines calling me about your dog. So, you know, obviously it was serious, but there's no way that, that, that you know, that wasn't going to happen at all. That Paco was uh, uh, like a son to us. Back in the days, we didn't have no children. Um, he was basically our, our firstborn, you know, and that's how he was treated. I mean, he was treated like, you know, he was pampered like you got no idea, brother, you know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean showers with us. I mean, he was like a child. And I, I don't think he ever knew that he was a dog, to be honest with you. You know, I think he, he thought that dogs were dogs and he was another human. You know? Um, even... Did you say even, owning a dog like Paco was life-changing for you? A dog like Paco what? Well, would, would you say owning a dog like Paco was a life-changing experience for you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I owe a lot to Paco today. A lot. Paco was a miracle in my life. Paco was um, a bless, a blessing in my life. Uh, my family, you know, he was a blessing for my family. Paco came in a, in a very critical time in my life. Um, and, you know, he, even, even till today, you know, when we when we think about Paco, we think about an angel. Um, it might sound corny. It might sound, you know, cheesy or weird or whatever you want to call it. But I still think that he was he was an angel that it was sent to us. You know, he. One day people will know what he did for me. Uh, uh, but I, I tell you, 
in short, I tell you, he he was a blessing for my family. And he did change my life and he did help me in an amazing way. When did you find out that Paco was a producer as well as as good as showing in the ring that you found out, man, he can really produce? Um, very quick. With his first second, I mean, for his first uh, two breedings, um, puppies were so little and so much like him. Um, by by that time already, of course, I was going to shows and uh, I was paying attention what this dog would produce, that dog would produce, these big names in you know what 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 they were producing. Um, first and second breeding, I tell you, they came out so much like looking like each other. The, the consistency was amazing. And they all had that Paco style, that head, that short backness. Um, there is there, there are specific, specific things with him that is pretty much a signature when, when we talk about Paco or, or you know, anything related with uh, his uh, descendancy. You know, um, he produces... Uh, For those he, that don't know, what is the signature uh, Paco look? What is the signature Paco look? First and anything, short backness. Very short back dogs. You know, very, very short back dogs uh, without high rears, you know. Um, also, the, the head structure of Paco is, you can see it eight, nine generations down the road. You can still see that, that shape, that high top scope, um, that heavy snout, you know. Um, there is a specific look that if, if you look at if you go into my uh, see my dogs they all look alike. That's no matter what color they carry, if they're fawn, if they're black, if they're brindle, if they're champagne, it does no matter. They all look like Paco, and they all have short backs, you know, and also you know like short rear legs with good angulation. Uh, those three things that's always there, always that face, that that specific look in the face. And, and short legs, you know, um, it's always there. It's pretty much a signature. Uh, um, who's who's your favorite Paco offspring? That's a tough question, my brother. That's, that's a tough a one. Tough, <laughs> yeah, that's a tough I one. I thought I would uh, ask. I, I figured it'd probably be tough, but I said I will give it a shot at eggs. Yeah, that's a tough one. You know, um, he had quite a few. Beautiful animals. I, I, it will be very tough for me to tell you this one or that one, or or if it was in my yard or it was in someone else's yard. You know, uh, there were too many of them. You know, um, too many beautiful animals. He, he, I don't know. That's a that's a good one. No, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that. It's too many of them in my head. Let, let me ask you this, Marco, because you've seen a lot of dogs traveling in your travels. Outside of your yard, what was a dog that blew you away when you saw him or her for the first time? Uh, I saw my yard. When it comes to females, uh, I don't know if you remember um, the the bitch, the mother of... um, the mother of Denzel, what's her name? Um, Holly Berry. Holly Berry. That was an impressive bitch. That was a very impressive bitch ahead of her time. Um, when it comes to, I mean, this is talking about, you know, back in the days. Um, talking about males, I don't know. One of the nicest dogs. The, I'm talking about, you know, something that impressed me, you know. Um, Little Row, one of them, that's for sure. Um, I like Hef very much also. Um, Little Row, Hef. Uh, what is I don't know. Let's see. Of the past, those dogs, brother. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think those are the ones that I can that, that I can mention right now. Um, well, let me ask you this, one, Marco. Well, yes, what's, what's your what's your your thoughts on the whole 
exotic micro movement, and would you ever use those type of dogs in your program? No, no, no. Um, look, brother, um, I have nothing against them, you know. Um, um, they can do whatever they want. They can come up with whatever they want to come up. The only thing that I'm against is that if they label it as a American bullies, they're not American bullies. You can create whatever you want to create. You know, I, I, I will applaud you. I will, you know, give you all the respect. Um, everybody's free to do whatever, you know, whatever they feel is best for them or whatever they, you know. Uh, this is almost like a, this is art, you know, when, when it, we're talking about creations. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter what, what you're trying to create, you know, a perfect dog or a super correct dog or small, big, large, wh whatever, you know, or if you, you have, you want to create a new breed. Uh, I think it's just, it would be nice if they just, uh, they just find a name for the breed, you know, uh, and so people won't won't get confused and think that those are American bullies. You know, that's my only thing. And beyond that, uh, obviously, you know, it would be nice if if you can see them, you know, looking healthy and and you know, um, problem with them. You know, uh, bullies are American bullies. Ameri are American bullies and and exotics. They are a different breed. They are whatever they're mixed with. Uh, they are something else, you know. And if the breeders and they're creating these exotics, uh, um, that's what they like. That's what they're going for. That's what they love. Or, you know what? God bless them. They can, you know, you they can that. do whatever they so like. Being a judge. Being a judge with the ABKC, would you have a problem if the registry decided one day to accept them? I I wouldn't have a problem myself uh, if they have a perfect standard. But till today, you know, everybody call whatever they think is an exotic. We, what you know, whatever they mix or whatever they have, uh, and is little or is different. Um, they call it exotic, and you know, some of them look like a French mix, some of them like a bulldog mix, some of them like uh, I don't know, you know. Uh, and I'm not gonna deny it; some of them are just beautiful, but they're not American bullies. They could be a nice pet in my house, but there's no way they're gonna be mixed with my purebred dogs. Okay. And uh, you know, but if there is a specific well put together standard, uh, you know, why not? If they're going to be confirmation correct, you know, if they're going to be health-wise, you know, they're going to a sound dog, you know, like a dog that it looks healthy, a dog that, you know, um, that it is, you can see him when he walks, you can see him and he's happy, you can see that he's, he's all right. And why not? You know, I mean... I, I wouldn't have a problem. I, my problem is that, that they don't have a specific look. You know, um, everybody calls exotic whatever they think is exotic. But, you know, you go to one kennel and they look one way. You go to another one, they look another way. And you go to another one, they look a different way. So um, it's just that, you know, if they could have a specific standard where all can fit in, um, and you know they they they're healthy and and let me ask you, Marco. What was the deciding factor in you wanted to become a judge? It's actually a two part question. Why did you want to become a judge, and how do you feel about the structure of today's bullies? Um, becoming a judge. Um, I I, I had my doubts to become a judge because I love to compete. You know, and I knew, it, it, I mean, a judge should be able to compete, but I knew it was going to be kind of like uh, no good, you know. People will talk no matter what. You know, you're, oh, he's a judge, that's why he's winning, or, or I don't know. Um, but I was asked, you know, for 
couple years in a row to become a judge, and, and one day I decided, you know what, we don't have that many judges in California. Um, why not? You know, why not? I, I maybe I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop showing so often, and just you know, maybe uh, you know. Uh, also, um, by being a competitor for so many years, let me let me say this. This is the, the important part of it. Uh, by being a competitor for so many years, I I wanted to be a judge so can be fair, brother, to the competitors, you know, so I can, um, I don't know, so I can be one of those judges that, you know, doesn't dance with nobody, that doesn't do no favors, that doesn't have any inclination for any specific size or, you know, I know I'm known for pockets, but you know what, I'm judging structure and that's no matter the size of the dog, you know, if you have a a large dog and it's the best in, 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 in the ring, he's going to win. He's going to take it all, you know, or, or extreme or packet or standard. I, um, that was one of the main drives, you know, that pushed me to, to become a judge, you know, so, so to have uh, a voice <laughs> within the breed, I mean, within the uh, registry, you know, so I can, uh, so I can be listened to, you know. So, so maybe give a few, few, um, few thoughts to see, you know, if they like it, if it's, a, you know, if, if they will work, you know. To uh, I gotta ask you because you just thought, made me think about something when you were talking about judges and showing dogs. Back in 2012, your dog Shifu took the nationals. When I mean, the process, when you you count them out early and put them away into nationals. But you didn't actually handle him for nationals. Why? Why was that? Why was that? Uh, yeah. I guess reason why well, you didn't want to handle him at nationals. Well, in 2012. You know, uh, yes. Uh, well, I guess you can call it a tactic. Um, what happened is that you know everybody knew about Typhoon. You know, my champagne boy. He was already a grand champion, and and Typhoon was, you know. Uh, during, you know, he was all over the country, you know, we compete all over and, and everybody knew him. And I wanted to compete, I, I, you know, I had, I had Shifu, Shifu looked insane, beautiful, but me being a judge and, and witnessing so many comments and, 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 you know, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe also I was just trying to avoid to be in the ring, you know, so the dog can be judged for what he was and people not thinking that, oh, he's getting, you know, he, you know, he's, he took it because he's a judge or he took it because they know each other or because they're friends or whatever, you know. So I decided to send them to a friend of mine um, to get trained. But before this, a good friend of mine, I give I give the dog to him and I ask him, I go, look, just champion this dog, just champion him. And whenever you whenever you compete with the dog, just give his name and his number. Don't 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 mention the kennel. Don't mention where where he comes from or anything. And whenever you're showing him, just go in and out. Don't no room for conversations or you know, just you know, just go in and out. And and if you do good, you do good. If you don't do good, it's okay. Bring him home. So that's how he became a champion. And then when he became a champion, uh, a good friend of mine, this lady who is a, a judge for AKC, also a trainer, um, I asked her if she can, you know, if she will show my dog a national. And, and she told me yes, but, you know, I will have to train him. And I told her he's trained already. He's very, very, he's very workable. He, he you know, he. He's very good in the ring, and she's like, no, but, you know, that's with you guys, but, or that's with you, but I have my own style, I have my own way to, to train dogs, and I, I, I told her, okay, good, so what do you want me to do, you know, so she's like, just bring him home, bring him to my house every night, at least a couple months before, before the show, before nationals, so that's what we did, and, uh, and the nationals, 
she was going to show Shifu, I mean, yeah, Typhoon and Shifu. But I didn't want nobody to see Shifu in my booth. I didn't want nobody to identify or, or you know, relate Shifu with me or, or with my channel. Just to avoid anything, brother. Just to avoid whatever, you know. I mean, I trusted the judge. But I don't know, you know, if the judge was thinking, was going to think like, oh, you know what, this is Marco. If I give him, you know, the win, uh, people is going to talk trash about me or, and, you know, I'm just going to give him second place. If I give him second place, he's not going to have room to complain and I'm going to save my neck, you know. I'm not saying that he was going to do that, but, you know, because I trust him very much. I like this judge very much, but at the same time, I wasn't going to take my chance. You know, we're all humans. There's pressure, um, a lot of responsibility, a lot of people, a lot of eyes on us, you know, when we're judging, and, and I don't know. You know, I just didn't want nobody to tap his shoulder and say, hey, do you know, that's, that's Marco's dog. Um, and, you know, what what could have been, you know, uh, his, his thoughts at yeah. that moment. I just, I just wanted to avoid that. Um, so when we went to national, I kept in cover. I would show only uh, Typhoon, you know, only Typhoon to everybody, and he will be, he was, uh, and Shifu was covered the whole time. The only time he, he would get out of the crate was just to compete. And um, I didn't even approach the ring until later, you know, um, because I didn't want people also to relate the dog with me. You know, because of, of the look, you know, he has that pack of look and immediately it will be, oh, no, that, you know, and me screaming or something like that, and immediately will, you know, will put a spotlight on me and, oh, that's his dog. So that's what I was trying to avoid. And, of course, you know, nobody knew about my lady, you know, nobody knew about um, the lady who was showing the dog, Lydia, Lydia Duarte, um, who is an excellent handler and and she did an insane work too you know she did an insane insane work kept the dog on point i mean not even for a second that dog was out of place and that's how we did it my brother you know um it was very it was a very beautiful moment when uh i, I know it had to I feel good i know it had to oh, feel good yeah, you know, when I when I went over and uh, I shake the hands of the of the judge and he's like, "What should you you know what, what what's going on?" and he's like, that, "I'm at home. That's my dog." And he was like, "What?" I go, "That's my dog, brother. Thank you very much." You know, so it was a beautiful moment. I I can I can't describe. You know, um, I've been you know I've been competing forever and. and, and yeah, let me ask you this, Marco. Why, why, why not defend defend the title um, in 2013 up in New York? Was that because now people knew who people knew that was your dog at that point? Well, you know, for 2013, I I, I was um, well. She she uh, she flew already took nationals. I I, I would have taken um, Typhoon for 2013, you know? But, I don't know. What do you think people would have think if I thousand twelve, and then if I take 2013 with, you know, my other dog? Me being not only a judge, but also a senior judge. I, you know, I don't think it will be <laughs> good for nobody. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, because right or wrong, people talk regardless about the judging. No anyway, matter what, right you know, I mean, ABKC yeah. is, a, is a serious organization, is a serious registry, very, very serious. And if I was lucky to, to take it in 2013, it was very easy, and, and you know, for anybody, really, that, oh, no, you know, this is fixed or something, you know? Um especially for the people who really doesn't understand well um, this animal, the people who really doesn't understand the structure, you know, who deserves it, who doesn't. Um, 
So, yeah, I, you know, it was better if I didn't show up, you know, if I didn't show my dogs. Uh, I, and I did enjoy very much, very, very much um, the 2000, 2013 Nationals and, and, you know, the dog that took it, super well-deserved win, you know. It was a gorgeous animal. And um, brother, you know, it was uh, another beautiful day to celebrate, you know, uh, American bully. You know, it was a wonderful time. Maybe 2000, uh, 2015 or 2000, maybe this year. I don't know. You know, I got, uh, I still love to show um, Typhoon. I think he's an extraordinary dog. Um, and I, I love to, I, I love to take him to nationals. So maybe this year, you know, I actually here, had a maybe. chance to see a, a, a Typhoon uh, clone at the at the Maryland show this past weekend. Uh, the, he was from North Carolina, and I cannot think of the dog's name at this point. But uh, yeah, but we were talking because I also had a chance to see Aki this this weekend at the Maryland show. I love, I love Aki. I love Aki. Um, and the dog that you saw was a champagne dog. Yes. The, yeah, yeah. He he became a champion this. That's year. right. Yes, 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 yes. He became a champion this past weekend. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful animal. Beautiful dog. Beautiful, beautiful dog. But, yeah, you get, know, going back to... Because I actually have him on video. When I get a chance, I'll send it to you. Please do. Please do. Um, but going back to Aki, well, I love that dog, brother. Beautiful animal. Beautiful, beautiful animal. But, it, it, you know, it, it's too bad he's so far away. From me, man. I, I had more questions tonight, but the darn boards broke down on me, man. But I guess so many people can call. The, I mean, we listening in, just crashed the boards tonight, man. But this is my last question for tonight, man, because I got to get you back on again. I had so many more. When people bring your name up, when it's all said and done in the bully community, what would you like for people to say about you and your legacy as far as the bully community? Huh. I don't know. Uh, I don't know, my brother. I have no way. Maybe I would like to be remembered like a, a person who, I don't know exactly, brother. So many things come to my head. Just a, a, a serious, a person that respects the breed very much, a person who who very to the breed, you know. Um, I don't know. A serious person, a serious kennel. I don't know, my brother. I don't know. Uh, I I never thought about that. You know, I that my ego is very small, my brother. I never think about those things, really. And I don't, I don't, I don't. I just want to be remembered as a good person. That's all. You know, yes, good so person for the breed. Yeah, that's it, brother. You know, that's that's it. I don't. <laughs> oh, I know. I had to ask you. So, what made you pick that for your intro song tonight? Oh, my intro. How do you like that song, brother? How do yeah. you like that song? It was interesting, man. It caught me on guard. I, I said, "This is coming from Marco." <laughs> Yes, no. Is that, it, is that it, one it, of the artists you were talking about? You were you were working with out in California that came out to to see you. Yes, it's an artist. He's a singer from Colombia. Uh, his name is Rico El Monumental. It's a very, very talented guy, brother. Very talented. He's a a, a, a bully lover, you know, uh, big time bully lover. Um, he has few in his ranch, and this this guy has been coming to LA to do his um, music videos. And uh, I love his music, and he he became my a personal friend. Um, so I'm just, you know, I, I, I fall in love with his music, brother. And as a matter of fact, last Saturday, um, he just um, made his last um, music video with a very, very talented um, um, producer, movie producer, um, Vajo Ojeo, a Spaniard guy from Canarias, who is extremely talented, too. So, I don't know. You know, I'm, uh, once again, I'm in love with his music brother. He's a personal friend, and I want I want everybody to know about this guy. You know? Okay. And, um, 
I'm so glad that, that's they it. got a good chance to him. My brother, believe me, this guy is, is going to be the next thing, you know, the next big bull. Um, oh, forget it. This guy is going to be, he's something else. He just, uh, he's just uh, new in, in, in our market, you know, in America. He's very well known in South America, but, you know, that, that's why I have to do that, that, that song. And that's one of his new songs. Thank you so much tonight, man. I gotta get you back on again one day, Ray. Cause it's, <laughs> that, that shocked me. With the best first time I ever had the board crash over there. Man, thank but you, brother. I really brother. Thank, you, I, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming on tonight. No, my pleasure, brother. Sorry I couldn't be any faster with my answers, but I'm I'm going through some really really bad allergies. I'm, I don't know if you know my voice going back and forward, and but um. My pleasure, brother. Anytime. Thank you for having me, and, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Um, you know, um, I'm here at your service, brother, anytime. Give me a jingle. I'm here. All right. Take care, Marco. You take care, Zoff. Thank you very much. Zoff. Take care, my brother. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. I want to thank each and every one for tuning in tonight for another uh, episode of Bully Talk is Dead Pits. Hey, I want to apologize again for the boards crashing tonight. I really wanted to get more deep into the questions, but I hope you learned a lot about Marco, a little bit about him personally, and more about the legacy of Paco. And as always, we go out on a positive note. Uh, I ain't going to let the devil stop. God bless each and every one. And again, peace. Have our second time around But before you go There's something I'd like to say Everything's not what it seems There's a stronger force behind the scenes He's a light every day He's right there when we call In Him is where my Lift my eyes beyond the sky Only He can save my life And only He can hear my cry I wanna thank you God for giving me one more day To raise my voice and to sing you free I sing it out loud I sing it all day This song is my prayer Uh uh-huh.